Welcome to Enlightened Evolution. I'm Kay. And I'm Christina. We're here to discuss the ebb and flow of our soul's healing and transformation through self-reflection, choosing intentionally, honoring thyself, and following your inner guide. Thank you for joining this safe space with us. Welcome, everybody. This is Enlightened Evolution with Kay. And Christina. How exciting is this? Our first podcast ever. We're thankful for everybody being here today. We're just here to talk about mental health, self-help, family, childhood, relationships, spiritual growth, personal growth, health, wellness, anything in those categories. I love how our friendship evolved. We've actually known each other our whole lives. We went to school together and we never really connected through childhood. I knew who she was. I played sports. I think that you cheerleaded and yeah. I think that you and actually, I coached your sister yeah, in cheerleading. I, yes, you yeah, you did coach my little sister. And we developed our connection more well in adulthood. We both had this mutual friend. I'm no longer friends with this person. She I had to evolve out of that type of friendship. But I met Christina through this friend, and I'm so thankful to be able to connect through her, through that other person. We don't live in the same state. I'm still here in Michigan. And I'm in Georgia. Yes, which is so beautiful and warm. And I think I feel like we we built our connection through social media more than anything. We started sending each other memes on Instagram and sending Snapchat videos of good days, bad days, dark times, congratulating ourselves through our accomplishments and and our friendship grew from there. I recently got to go out to Georgia for the first time and see you and we hung out in Atlanta and that was such a beautiful time and I loved reconnecting with you finally physically in the physical world through that. I've I feel like I've had such a electronic relationship with you over the years, but still the closeness remained. Do you want to go ahead? Sure. And I do want to add to that. I think one of the, so you and I were hanging out with this mutual friend that really neither of us resonated with anymore. We were both kind of in similar spots where we were starting to learn what was for us and what wasn't for us and how to step away from those things. But I was going through a horrible time in my life at that time. And you suggested who, the person who's now our psychic that we've been to so many times, but you suggested me going to her for a, re- a reading. Yes. And that like really catapulted my spiritual journey and my healing journey. And through that, I feel like we were able to connect on so many different things. And I think our friendship has just built from there. But it's wild how you can have gone to school for all these years with someone. Mm -hmm. We weren't in the same grade, but our school was tiny. (laughs) Everyone knew everyone. So, But it's interesting how you don't really build those friendships until later in life, which is great because we had time to grow and be different people. And we met, we became friends at a point in our lives when we were dedicated to being good people. (laughs) Yes, we did. And I, I just remember that first night that we hung out together through this mutual friend and they were partying and drinking and doing their thing. And we kind of just sat there quietly and just talked to each other. And I felt like like if you wouldn't have been there with me, I I just, it just would have been, I would have felt alone. Like I didn't feel like I, I didn't feel like I belonged there anymore. And so I'm grateful. I'm grateful that we were able to connect and I'm grateful that we're here now. I think full disclosure, we're not claiming to have all the right answers. We're not licensed practitioners in any way, but we both have done I think a lot of inner work over the years and we have a lot to give back for people that resonate with us. So, yeah. And I think what we've found through our friendship is we've learned from each other's struggles and healing. And I feel like 
while we're on similar paths, we also both bring different perspectives to things. So when I would come to you with an issue, you were able to give me a different perspective and vice versa. And so that's what we hope to do for our audience as well is just share our struggles, share our triumphs, and Mm -hmm. um, hopefully it resonates with you and hopefully we can all heal together. Yes. Uh, So I'll go ahead and jump in a little about me. I'll give you some not so important information, but sometimes it's nice to have these details to connect with people. I don't think, did we mention we're both nurses as well? So we both went into the same profession as well. I work in nursing professional development, specifically in instructional design and mentoring. I do have a master's in nursing education and a national certification in professional development. More personally, I am a sexual assault and domestic violence survivor. I've been in therapy throughout my life, really since a young child, and also have read numerous self-help books as well. So I've got a lot of true therapy in there, but like Kay said, we are not therapists ourselves. So our advice is strictly going to be through our experience. I have, I recently married, I have three cats and a dog. I am not religious and I'm pansexual. So a little bit deeper into more of my healing journey, really. Uh, I'm finally at a part in my life where my romantic relationship is the least of my worries, which hasn't been the case for the majority of my life. And this relationship really has been this like safe haven for me to grow. I have a partner that is so patient with me and he just gives me this like safe space to realize the things in myself that I still need to work on and continue to grow. And he gives me grace with that, which is amazing. My inner work recently has been doing internal family system therapy with my therapist and really just trying to be curious. For a lot of my life, I have been very black and white with my thinking and very absolute with my thinking. And more and more, I'm becoming more open-minded and just curious when things don't fit what I know. I love that. Yes. I would say definitely in my darkest times, it has been community that has pulled me out and made me feel seen, made me feel like there is a safe place that others have gone through what I've gone through and they've made it through, whether that's in social media, podcasts, books, YouTube. And that's kind of what we're hoping to do here too. We're hoping to share our struggles and share the way we're healing through them in hopes that you feel seen and you feel supported and that you can heal as well. Okay. Tell us a little bit about yourself. So like you said, I'm also, I also went into the nursing career I, for the past two years, I work on a neuro step down unit, taking care, taking care of a lot of stroke and cardiac patients. I love during my whole years of nursing school, you were such a mentor to me and still are in my profession. I love it. I think that what I've learned in nursing school and what I've learned in life and not nursing school, but in my nursing career, caring for others from all diverse cultures, walks of life. I think that I have a lot to give back and a lot of knowledge to spread of what people need during their times of healing and suffering. I'm also a full-time single mom. My son is 14 years old and my daughter is 10. That is a whole, it's a beautiful struggle within itself. Anyone that's a parent can attest to that. The ups and downs of each phase in life and how you have to go with the the ebb and flow of your children as they're growing and what they need and try to implement things, the good things that you learn from your parents and also take away some not so pretty things to try to give back to your children. And I think we can go into more later on about how it's just a different time how they're exposed to the world in such a different way with all the social media and the different pressures like that and how their little spirits evolve. 
um, with so much social pressure and they're, they develop this, I think this inner critic that we all have. So we don't want anybody to have that inner critic. We want everybody to know that you don't have to be judged or shamed or feel guilty for anything. As far as a romantic relationship goes, it's also the least of my worries right now. And for a much different reason than yours, Christina, it's non-existent. <laughs> uh, <laughs> recently, last month, ended a relationship. I was engaged well over a year. There was oof, so many things I could go into about this relationship and not just that relationship, but every relationship. But it was such a learning process for me. And although I believe I experienced psychological warfare, I think that it's made me dive so deep into the person I am and the person I used to be. And I'm grateful for that experience with that person. So later on, we will get into more of that. Also, sexual assault and domestic violence survivor. I'm... I think that uh, that's such a heavy, raw thing to say, but I think that so many people experience it. It's good to just, it's good that we just come out, I think, and just let everybody know that you're not alone. These things are so common. Sometimes they, people, it's diminished what happens to people and I hope that everybody knows that if you've ever experienced that, we're, we are sorry, but you can get your power back and you can elevate to a way where you don't have to claim to be a victim anymore and you can, you can learn from it and grow from it and all the struggles and the powers and the inner turmoil, you can choose to turn that to enhance your life with all the wisdom that you've learned from everything. I think during the darkest times in my life, therapy wasn't brought to me at a young age like it was you. I wish that, who got you into therapy? Was it your parents at a young age? Yeah, so it was my mom and it was actually a part of my sexual assault at a young age. So my mom became aware of it. And I'll go into that story in a future episode, but my mom became aware of it and she was doing everything in her power to help me. Mm -hmm. And so we got a social worker and they really suggested therapy. And I did a lot of play therapy when I was a child. And honestly, therapy didn't feel like something that was working for me until the past couple of years. Talk therapy was the majority of what I had done throughout my life in I'd had many different therapists and the majority of what I had, they really just sat there. They didn't contribute much to the conversation. And it really wasn't until I read the book, The Body Keeps the Score. Mm -hmm. I'm blanking on the author's name, but he he goes into all these various types of therapy. And at that point in my life, I did not know that there were other types of therapy like EMDR and internal family systems. And so it really wasn't until I found my current therapist and um, I did a search in looking for someone who did EMDR therapy because that's what I thought I needed to help heal my trauma. But I do still have a lot of repressed memories from childhood that I'm not able to access, which is honestly probably for the best. Yeah. (laughs) But when I brought that to my new therapist, she was like, EMDR is not going to work for you if you don't have a vivid memory of that. And she actually suggested internal family systems, and it has been a life changer for me. That's beautiful. I I appreciate therapy. I've only gone to therapy. I started it less than a year ago. I do love my therapist. She gives me a lot of just pointers about life. She hears me. I feel seen. I feel heard. I feel validated, but she also pushes accountability when I victimize myself for situations that I put myself in. And I love her for that. I see her maybe twice a month and I'm just, I'm going to continue to see her. I was, I think I was worried about anybody that doesn't 
has bad experience with therapy or they don't know which therapy is right for them. I think like people talk about therapist shopping. I got lucky. And the first therapist I found was actually, actually, she's the second. The first therapist was actually a relationship coach for that relationship that I had just gotten out of. It was, we started going to relationship therapy very early on in the relationship and she was not a good fit, but this, Mm. this therapist is a good fit and it's not, it's, it's not focused on relationship therapy. It's what's best for Kay and how I can grow and evolve as a person. I think I that- do. I do suggest. I know you mentioned therapist shopping. Mm-hmm. I think if you haven't ever been in therapy, it's hard to know what works for you. So it's very well that you might go to someone like you said, the first relationship coach was not a good fit. Mm hmm. You're going to know. And it it sucks, too. I really would do your homework ahead of time because therapy is not cheap. So depending on, you know, right. if you have health care coverage that can cover therapy or if you're paying for it out of pocket, I want to know on the front end, you know, what are you capable of? I want to look up reviews of a therapist. And then you probably will have to go through one session. And it may take a few sessions to really know do I vibe with this person? Just because someone's a licensed therapist doesn't mean they're going to work for you. And I do want to encourage people. I've felt like stuck before, like, okay, this is my therapist, whether it's because that's the only therapist that my insurance is going to pay for. And I felt like I wasn't benefiting from the relationship. So I do encourage people, if you feel like it's not beneficial to you, do talk to your therapist and say, you know, is there any other forms of therapy that we could try? Because there are so many. Or if it's just the person you don't click with, try somebody else. Yeah, absolutely. When I first started going to therapy, I I did in person with her. I think that really helped a lot. And not everybody has that option. And if you don't have that option, of course, online therapy, it's it's just as good. I've been doing online sessions with, with her as well. And I find I found almost that when we started doing our Zoom calls or whatever, we're so used to being on FaceTime and being on Zoom, especially through COVID, that it it felt more of like a laid back conversation than a one-on-one in-person in therapy. So whatever works for you, I think that don't be opposed to either one. I'm <laughs> thinking about that first therapist that I saw. She was very religious. She was a devout Christian, I think Baptist. And so it was, um, it was mandatory that we prayed before the session started and after the session ended. And, you know, in a way that's, that's beautiful, especially when it works for people. I do believe in the power of prayer. I pray myself, but I'm, but I'm not religious and I'm an omnist. I think, I think that there's one creator and there's many different paths to get there and everybody gets to choose their own paths. And I love researching different religions and hearing other people's perspectives on their own spiritual journeys and on what works for them. And so that's also something that when you're seeking your therapist, it's good to be in alignment with not necessarily the same spiritual belief, but how are they going to impose their religious background onto you? Because if you're, if you need to seek something like meditation and Buddhism and they're trying to put, you know, Baptist prayers into your therapy session, it's not going to be, it's not (laughs) going to be, it's not going to be conducive for your healing. And, and it's, It's going to be not only a waste of money, but a waste of your time. And you need to find somebody you're in alignment with that you feel comfortable with. And yes, connection is so important in therapy. Even if it's somebody that has all these accreditations and they've been a therapist for 20 years, it doesn't matter if if you don't connect. Yeah, definitely. What is the theme of your healing journey right now in your life? Not even, it doesn't even have to be a theme. What are you... What are you doing right now to, what's something you do every day or something 
Have you had, do you have a, like a new year's resolution for this year? Something you want to implement there? I, I don't do new year's resolutions, but (laughs) (laughs) I think the biggest thing for me is taking accountability Mm -hmm. and being curious. So love that. I'm trying to not be quick to respond to people because I find that I respond out of anger a lot of times. Mm -hmm. And so I am trying to kind of be more reflective. And if I feel agitated, I'm trying to reflect on, okay, what part of me needs to be heard right now? What part of me is upset? And how can I respond in a constructive way? And then also being curious about that other person's perspective and does it have some merit to it? And is there something I can incorporate into my, maybe not my own beliefs, but is there something to take away from it that's valuable? Yeah. What about you? Just a better understanding. This year, I, I don't really have New Year's resolutions either. But I have made a pact with myself. I'm not I'm going to abstain from any alcohol this year, any any smoking. I'm going to be completely sober the whole year. I'm not going to have sex the whole year. Maybe some light dating later on, but nothing right now that's on the forefront of my mind about that. In the past in relationships, because of what I've because of what I've been through in the past, the more recent relationships, I think that I was afraid to just show my true authenticity in fear of being judged and shamed for who the things I used to be or the situations that I got myself into becoming a mom really young in life and exposing myself to certain social groups or people that now I wouldn't, I couldn't even imagine. So I think being fully honest with others and myself, honoring my yeses and my noes, and not abandoning myself to make others feel more comfortable. So I think honesty. Take up space, sis. Yes, that's right. (laughs) Honesty, accountability, get out of the victim mindset, and be fully authentic in every situation with being – with being – gentle and kind to others and understanding that they're they're also struggling even if you don't align with them or you get triggered or you feel threatened in a way you don't have to expose yourself to that person anymore but you can also still love them unconditionally and give them forgiveness and you don't have to hold resentment in your heart definitely i didn't mention Perspective is a big, and maybe that plays into curiosity. I've really been able to share perspective of other people that I haven't been able to embody before Mm -hmm. and give people a little bit more grace. Yeah, I think perspective is huge. I think whether it's in the workplace or your romantic partner, for me, especially with my children, I think anything can be a conversation. I don't think that we need to have a hush hush mindset about anything. And I I think that when we start to have conversations with people that do hold a different perspective than we do, we do need to be curious and observe why why is anger coming up right now? Why is my perspective making them so angry? We don't we don't need to feel insulted if our perspective angers somebody else. But giving them space and trying to hear them and letting you know that they're safe with us to share their perspective, I think, is what we, what I'm trying to practice more of as well. Awesome. Well, I think that was a great intro. We are I so excited too. on this journey. And that brings us to wanting to ask you all, what is the current theme of your healing journey? We want you to write in to us. We have an email enlightened evolution pod at gmail.com write into us the things you're experiencing anything you're struggling with what's working well for you we definitely want to hear more perspective on what's working well for you because it might be something we've never tried so we'd love to share it on our show as well there are also 
resources available to you in the community. We mentioned domestic violence, and there is a domestic violence hotline. It is 800-799-7233. That's 800-799-7233. And there's also a sexual assault hotline. It is 1-800-656-4673. That's 1-800-656-4673. Join us weekly. We'll be dropping new episodes every Monday. Namaste. Namaste. 